it is, ladies and gentlemen. We are back for another episode of Chicken Bone Alley, brought to you by SRI Performance Stock Car Steel, along with Draco Springs, and now, as we've been saying here lately, RK Motorsports Consulting with Randy Keene. I'm David. I'm Sterling. What's up, y'all? What it is, what it is. What it is. What it ain't. It's cold. That's what it is. It's cooled down all of a sudden. We finally Man, that gum. Well, we didn't find fall. This ain't fall. Well, no. Well, we went to Ohio a couple weeks ago, and it was cold. It was cold. Cold. We come back, and it was hot. So I was like, okay, this is good. I'm, I'm, I kind of, I thought, I thought I was ready for the cold, but I, I were not. <laughs> so now we get back to its thirty something degrees the other, the other morning. Good lord, it was, cold. it was frosty outside. It was frosty. I had a frost warning. Glad my truck was under the carport. Mine wasn't. <laughs> My, my, yeah, but my you got the remote start. I ain't got a remote start. I did have that, and I'm really glad I used it because it felt good when I got in there. <laughs> your hands <laughs> are warm on your heated steering wheel. Yeah, it works good. Nice, thanks. If mine's heated, I better breathe on it a few times. Yeah, just blow on it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun, fun, fun. Well, it was another eventful weekend for us. It was wide open this weekend. I didn't stop much. Well, I did on Sunday. I didn't yeah. get. A, I didn't get accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. Yeah, either. I know. You, I, I figured you go with me, but no, uh, uh-uh, I'm gonna stay home and work on my truck. That was the plan. I ain't working on my truck. Uh, no, well, it was the plan too. Yeah, well, couldn't you failed. Hold, couldn't get a hold of people. Well, yeah, Friday. Uh, Friday was good. Got all got home. We were planning on going fishing Sunday, so I got home, got the boat ready and all for that, and uh, hung out and chilled for a little while. And then uh, Saturday got up, went to the little man's football game. He's only got a couple left, but uh, went to that game. And he, he did all right. He didn't do great. But um, I think he had uh, going to the uh, dirt track at Charlotte on his mind. So he wasn't oh, really yeah. worried about football. No. Nah. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way. I can't say nothing. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, so we got done the football game, and uh, we changed clothes. We're cold. My little boy changed clothes right quick. He was about to die. He couldn't wait to get up there. Uh, he was excited. So did he? How much longer? Oh, how much, how much we, longer? We get out of the we get out of the church parking lot. How long we got, Dad? <laughs> Literally five minutes. How about now, Dad? This is pretty <laughs> much all the way to about Paisley when he fell asleep. So, um, yeah, it was a while, but he woke up what about twenty minutes from Hooters? Oh yeah. How long we got now, Dad? How long we got now, Dad? <laughs> oh my lord. So anyway, so he he was excited. He you know I know, but. So we get up there and get us little Hooters. Thank the Lord. They had wonderful wings, smoked wings, Texas barbecue. Yes, they did. Perfect. We've been wanting some. We couldn't find any here lately. We've been kind of uh, falling short. So uh, we definitely hooked up with them this time. Well, I'm just going to say I had the chance to go back to Hooters today. Yeah. And, and the place that I was able to go, I think about the last five times we went there, they said their smoke, smoker was down. That and it's horrible. So I just, I just bypassed. I didn't well, I don't blame me. We had we had a good fix last week. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm talking I'm talking about going to Hooters all week with Cole. <laughs> and and I'm, Cole, you will get smoke wings, yes sir, Daddy. You gonna get uh, what's got whatever, 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 chicken. We get up there, Daddy. I want um, I want a grilled cheese. <laughs> so what, son? Are you want a grill? We come all the way to Hooters. You want a grilled cheese? This is why this boy still weighs twenty seven pounds. I mean, I ain't lying, but he fast though. He fast, but he weighs twenty seven pounds. <laughs> he I teeny, mean, but I ain't he lying. Ain't I mean, His sister Jesus. done passed him. The dang on puppy done passed him. He he is teeny, teeny. He, he, he look, he look. That's why we call him Chicken Nugget. Chicken Nugget. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. Speaking of that, we had us our our our, uh, our third our third uh tag along our third uh co-host whatever the third wheel there yeah come on with us uh little chicken nugget little cold man he was excited though he uh it's actually his first dirt, and we've been to a bunch of go-kart tracks and stuff but this is actually first dirt dirt track uh seeing late models and, and such but uh so he was really excited and been to a bunch of asphalt and stuff and he loves the dirt he like he likes dirt the best oh yeah he should they yeah, should yeah, maybe. Is it, it, well, is it, I say it for for a kid anyway. In my opinion, as a fan, I think there's a lot more going on. There's a lot more exciting stuff on dirt for it, a kid. 
regardless if it is more going on, when you see cars go in a corner and sliding sideways and stuff, it just looks like there's a lot going right. on. Right. It those guys may be riding around in their eyes, but yeah. It just looks like they're flying because tracks are smaller. They're, they look like they're flying and mm-hmm. sliding and hitting, banging doors. It just looks like a lot more is going on. Right. And on top of that, the access that you get to a dirt track, especially even at the big races, because, you know, you go to a NASCAR race. Yes, Cole's been down in the pits before with us and stuff like that, but you don't have the access around the cars that you have at a dirt track. No, not not at all. And you know, and, and the other thing too really is is the uh you know, we're going down into pits like you say and the drivers and the the, the, the uh crew members and um just the atmosphere. Everybody was so nice. Everybody come up to Cole and, well, and it was Halloween for the first time. Well it was Halloween. And by the way, we get the Hooters and Cole's got a Kyle Strickler shirt on, he's decked out, got his S R I <laughs> Draco Springs hat on, he walking up in there. And the Hooters girl asked him, well, what are you going to dress up as Halloween? Or for Halloween, it was, it was Halloween night. And um, he said, I'm going to the racetrack. <laughs> he didn't care about it during Halloween. I'm going as a Kyle Strickler fan, apparently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was excited about that. Yeah, he, he She asked him, you going to dress up as Spider-Man? He's like, what? Who's that? I'm going, as, I'm, I'm going to the dirt track. <laughs> so that was cool. But anyway, yeah. The, it it was really neat, you know, walking around the pits for him because you know he he all that's new to him and he was shocked. He was looking around, staring everywhere, taking it all in. But everybody took the time with him and you know brought him candy and um, showed him the different things around the race car and different. Just it was really cool and uh, made him made him feel real welcome and at home. And uh, he's ready made to go him back. A fan for life. He told me last night. Daddy, I'm ready to go back to where we went Saturday. <laughs> He's ready, bro. I said, well, they're running tomorrow night. Picking up tonight, Wednesday night. And I said, but we can't go. We can't go. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, but no, it was really cool. Like Strowman just said, I mean, that tells you what kind of what kind of folk are at these dirt tracks and stuff because you couldn't hardly pass a trailer out there that the, the wives or the girlfriends or the sisters or whoever, you know, whoever wasn't working on the car, they had a bucket of candy. Yeah, and uh, giving out to all the kids, and there was a bunch of people dressed up in Halloween costumes, and and uh, it was really cool. I mean, they they made the absolute best out of being there on Halloween. Oh, absolutely, most definitely. Um, and you know, they this was the the, the what the dirt track short short track dirt world. short track world Riding champ- short track world championship. I can get this one in the dagger mode. Was so screwed up. I don't even know. <laughs> But anyway, that, yeah. So, they say that the World Finals, um, they had to separate it because there's, the pits was going to be too full. And this and that and the other. And the fans or the spectators or whatever was going to yeah, be yeah, yeah. whatever. So, we get there. <laughs> and there's like, I don't know, 500 trailers <laughs> in the pits at that point. There's a lot. And, uh, I mean, just packed as it could be. And it was the same way it was in uh, at, up there at Portsmouth. I mean, you had to wear your mask through the gate. And as soon as you got through the gate, take it off. Everybody said nothing. Um, but everybody was, pfft, everybody wasn't paying attention to that stuff. I mean, whatever. But um, it was packed. So I don't see why they couldn't have the world finals. Oh, they could. I mean, they definitely could. It's just. I guess it's just more eyes on that, maybe. Bull crap. Yeah, it, it is. And it really is. unfortunately, North Carolina didn't do themselves any favors with reelecting their governor. But I'm just, you know, yeah, I went there. Hey, I hear, I hear that that was a screw up, and I they're 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 having to do like a they're having to do a enough recount. signatures to get a recount. That Maybe should so. happen. He was the only one to lose. He was the only one that. No, everything else was Republican. <laughs> I don't know. I think that they. Dude, I think they got that, that jacked dude has up. had something. Uh, I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, whoever, but he has had something against racing, big time. Yeah, <laughs> he don't want nothing to open up racing wise. No. So, uh, but anyway, nice. who knows? Hopefully, all that will get squared away somehow, real but, um, soon. Hopefully, yeah. But uh, so anyway. Uh, yeah, went went up there Saturday, had a blast. Um, it was a uh, well, it, it, I say it was a somewhat of an early night. It kind of was for us because it was getting cold, and like I said, my little my little boy there, 
four, five, five years old, four, five. Um, he probably, he, you know, he was getting tired and couldn't hang. Ladies, we normally hang. <laughs> middle well, of the night. I can hang as late as we normally hang. I know, especially with a two and a half hour ride home. A little yeah. bit easier when you can go 10 minutes to the, to the hotel. But, yeah, it made a little difference too. But uh, anyway, so we um we were able to hang around for a while and uh, get to talk to quite a few people. Dave uh, has pretty good interviews and um, was able to see a couple of big races that we wanted to make sure we were able to see before we had to go back. And, uh, and we were able to do that for sure. Definitely did. Definitely did. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Wish I was back there again tonight and tomorrow night. Oh, I wish I wish we could have went tonight, tomorrow night, Thursday, or Friday, Friday and Saturday. Saturday, all that. It's been wonderful. Um, I know uh, our guest last week, Ashley Tackett, she's up there at all of it. Yep, she's there now, I guess. So yeah. uh, she had to be maybe uh, reporting back to us, let us know. Uh, yeah, we might need to call her, get, get, the, yeah, she can get, the rundown, get the rundown for next week. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, um, but anyway, yeah, that was really neat. I I enjoyed it. The weather was good. Um, track was supposedly the track was horrible on Friday night. Well, for hot laps and qualifying and whatever, they were supposed yeah. to run invitationals and stuff. Um, on yeah, Friday, Friday night, night, I think. Yeah. But the uh, track was so bad, it pushed them back to curfew. I think right. That's what they said. They said it's spent so long working on the track because it just it was nasty there was a couple cars actually flipped just from the track it was it was rough 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 breaking up real bad and uh so they worked and worked and worked and worked on it and they got it pretty good i mean that for some reason i don't it's it's good orange clay on that track but it it always gets dusty, so I mean we're, we're used to that. that ain't no big it, deal. Well, it wasn't nowhere near as dusty as Portsmouth was, um, and it was a lot finer. It wasn't really, you know. I mean, you could see through it, and you could stand up there and wasn't getting oh, yeah, killed, right? But uh, it did, it did get dusty. Um, but but as far as the racetrack, as far as the surface, I mean, it was dead in the bottom, like we, like we always like see always. there. Um, and that was pretty much it. I mean, I think the top started to come in some during the modified race. Uh, the boy that ended up coming up and finished second, I can't remember his name, number 99 or whatever it was. But anyway, he ended up looking like he making the top or the middle work. Yeah. He was, uh, he, he seemed like he was, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But anyway, yeah, it was deadly, mainly dead in the bottom. Um, and even on our racing, that's pretty much about all it is. Oh, yeah. Dead in the bottom. So, uh, so before we get into much of that, how was the uh, how was how was your fishing? Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about I forgot about my um, was Canadian that forgettable my Canadian fishing experience, <laughs> 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 dude. Well, I've been I, we've been watching the weather and we had a cold front come through naturally, but it was full moon and um, the fish the the the, uh, the fish calendar the almanac whatever you know it's calling for really good bite for uh for saturday and sunday well um i think this front lingered a lot longer than they thought it was going to because uh originally the winds would be perfect for us to get offshore a little bit and fish and um they were mistaken they were wrong because <laughs> it got windy and cold and raining i told you it was probably gonna be a little eh, out well there. <laughs> i wasn't worried about a little bit of cold that's okay i can deal with cold but i can't deal with cold and with rain and with wind nah and then I, blowing just, water over the boat yeah one one of those i'm all right with but not all three at one time nah well, when it ever gets windy all that's gonna happen on my especially head. in Winyah bay Yes. Queen Yaw Bay is like ridiculous if people don't know. It gets it gets nasty in there. Yeah. I mean it's like you feel like you on a motocross track with yeah. constant whoops. Oh, on it's it. terrible. But we ended up we, we went out to the jetties, tried it, couldn't get out there safely. Um I mean there were six, seven foot seas at that point, you know, so it was it was pretty bad and um mm. We came in, uh, we fished. I would have been sick as a dog. <laughs> Probably, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> um, come back in, we fished some. We, it was it's real. It was real hard with the wind changing. The wind was blowing opposite the, the current, the tide. Oh, yeah, that's always um, fun. So it was real hard anchoring up, real hard staying in one spot. But um, we went all around trying and just couldn't couldn't get anywhere great. But uh, we caught a bunch of stingrays. That's all we caught. 
bunch of stingrays, which are fun to catch. If anybody's never caught a stingray, they are fun to catch. They'll fight. Well, yeah, getting them power. to the boat is fun. Yeah, getting them off ain't. Getting them off the hook so And you got to be careful because they got that little thing back there up under their tail. They get you. They get you. Or above their tail, whatever it is. I can't remember. I ain't. Got a hypodermic needle back there. I stay away from it. That's what I know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so that wasn't great. I had a good time. And believe it or not, when we were leaving about 3.30. Um, oh, y'all left before the sun went down? Oh, it happen. was, yeah, we left about 3.30. <laughs> and it was absolutely beautiful when we left. That's normally what happens. Exactly. I, I didn't want to leave at that point, but I'm like, it's Sunday. Ah, I got to get home. So, Anyway, that was pretty much it. Fun, fun, yeah. fun. I um, I ended up going to the in-laws, going to eat. That's fun. I helped them get down a Christmas tree. I saw that picture that the day after Halloween they're putting up Christmas trees. Hey, don't be mad. I ain't it's, mad. It's, I this, ain't. this is this is twenty twenty. It's been horrible. Let us be merry. Hey, mine's covered up with a with a blanket downstairs. It's been up all year. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, but I did get me a new one. Oh, okay. I got, it, I got it at the house the other day. This thing's awesome. Wait. It, um, I ain't put it up yet, but I watched all the videos of it. It's got an app. You go on with your phone and stuff. You control all the light colors and everything on it. With the oh, app. that's cool. It's got these patterns and move and everything. Really? Yeah, you can... It's got, it shows little dots and you make about, dots I'm, I'm glad my wife you. don't listen to this daggum radio show we do here because <laughs> she'd be like, um, we need no, one of those, um. Y'all's tree's a lot bigger than mine. I don't think they make them that big. Well, I don't, that's good <laughs> because we got 27 trees that she wants to put up everywhere. So I'm glad we don't have to put up another one. I'm one of these people. I'm fine with looking at the Christmas tree while I'm eating Thanksgiving dinner. That don't hurt my feelings Oh, I love it. And the mine will be up by Thanksgiving. That's for sure. But. I just don't see the need in 27 Christmas trees. Well, that's true. I mean, but, you know, but anyway, yeah. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just complaining, but <laughs> she don't listen to the show, so it really don't matter. Thank you, honey. Yeah, I she will this week. It. Thank you for contributing to our calls. She, she will this week. Well, I'm sure she will, and I have to contribute to her calls at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Oh, well, I reckon we should get into some... Some racing. Some racing. Like I said, we got some interviews. We did. We did. And uh, I reckon we'll do these. Let's just do them like we did uh, with the Portsmouth stuff. We'll Because uh, all these that we're going to put on here right now, we got before any of the any of the features. Yeah. That we talked to all these guys beforehand. So uh, let's, let's uh, let y'all listen to these. Over here with Rick Duzlak, just made it in to the street stop, Maine. Man, that's a pretty good driving there. How, how about it? Yeah, it wasn't bad. I mean, the car was a lot better than better than yesterday, of course. Um, I'm glad to, hey, we come 800 miles down. So, I mean, we're here, we're in the show. Now we can have some fun. That's what I'm talking about. And I see uh, we over here with our buddy Randy Keene. You got some stop tape breaks on this thing? Yes, we do. We got some stop tech breaks. So thanks to Randy a lot. I mean, Randy helps me out a great deal. Um, joke around with Randy a lot. I mean, Randy's a great guy. Um, I want to thank thanks to Richard Smith for letting me drive the car down here. I mean, this is only the second time back in this car. We had some good runs at Friendship, Carolina with it. So third time being, being in the car, I'm happy with that. We're in the show, so that's... Now we'll bring it to the front in the feature. So I was fixing to say, how you feel about it in the feature here? We'll, we'll tweak on it a little bit, and um, I think she, we, we can go to the front with this car. Good deal, buddy. We'll, we'll definitely be pulling you on, and so good luck out there. All right, man. I appreciate it. I knew we All right. We're down here walking around with Randy King, and he's uh, dragging us around. He said, hey, you need to talk to this guy. Scott Townsend, what's going on, buddy? Uh, not much, man. I figured I'd come down here and hang out with Rick and Daniel Sanchez. Talk couple guys from New York and Mass. Ran with them a couple times this year at the Valley. And ran with myself and uh, Big Bad Chad from Malta and the Valley this year. It's a fun program, hanging out with everyone. Cool deal, man. What, what you think about it down here? Uh, I ran down here last year. Uh, the outcome for the first event, which was the bigger event, uh, the outcome wasn't as great. Uh, we hit the wall in turn three and four. 
Uh, we came back, I thought we were done. Three and a half hours putting the car back together, went out in the Invitational Race and won. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's what it's all about. Well, uh, cool deal. Well, uh, what, what all y'all got going on with your program? Uh, next year, we uh, got we got two cars, at, one at the end of this year. Uh, we got two cars, we're going to have one as a travel car, one from Malta. Let's see where things go. We're hoping to travel a little bit more this year or this coming season. Cool deal, man. Well, we appreciate you giving us a little bit of time, and, uh, and glad to have you down here. Yeah, thank you. Now we're over here with Daniel Sanchez, driver of the Kryptonite 463 Modified here. How's it going, buddy? It's going good. We're excited. Uh, today's a lot less stressful than yesterday was. You know, we were uh, going crazy, getting ready to get transferred through the uh, heat races, and fortunately we finished in the top five, and... Uh, we're excited to race the feature tonight. That's awesome, man. Well, what you think about it? What you think about chances in the feature there? Uh, we're excited. The car's been great. It's uh, we're, we, tip, we typically run better at like a four tenths half-mile tracks like Eldora because that's where we normally race. And uh, it's been, it was digging. It, we just had a little bit of a mishap in the, in the qualifying where we just missed the setup just a little bit. And uh, we corrected it for the heat race, went from fifth to third in the first lap, and we were able to hang on. And and uh, finish there, so that was a good deal. That's awesome, man. Well, I see you got uh, our buddy uh, Randy Keens over here, and I see the Stop Tech logo on here. Tell us about your brakes on the car. Uh, Randy's been awesome. He worked with me right at the beginning of the year, and I actually just posted a video on my Facebook, Dan Daniel Sanchez Racing fan page, and there's literally no drag on these brakes, and they, I mean, they're phenomenal. We haven't had any issues at all, and it, what a lot of people don't realize is brakes are important in a race car. As much as you want to go fast, it's like having a four-wheel drive car in the snow. Sure, you're going to go fast, but can you stop? And that's where, where we're at. We're able to stop. We're able to set the car good going in the corner, drag the brakes coming off so we don't spin the tires. You can't ask any more out of a brake system. Awesome, man. Well, I tell you what, we're going to be up there cheering you on, and uh, good luck tonight. Hey, thank you. Now we're over here with George's own Will Harrington. Will, what's going on, buddy? How y'all doing today? <laughs> Good, man. Good. good. Look like y'all got a car pretty fast. Yeah, we were uh, pretty good last night. Uh, I think I made a little mistake there in the heat race. Just should have done a little better job of just uh, racing a little different, I guess. It's a uh, bigger racetrack, so I don't, we don't get to very much. So we were, uh, I still think we had a good car in the heat race. It's just my fault on the start there and stuff. So it is what it is. You know, uh, got a pretty good start spot, I guess, seventh. I guess. I don't know. I wish we were starting up, for, you know, close to the front, but. We'll do our best in this race here. It's going to be 30 laps. I think it's going to go pretty quick, even though it's kind of it's a bigger place. But we'll uh, we'll see. It's definitely some uh, heavy hitters in front of us. So we'll uh, do our best and just try to get out here. Not, nothing tore up too bad. There he is. But what you I mean, what you really think about the chances there? I mean, I think we got a good shot. Really, like our cars. I I mean, last night during the heats, everybody was within. I mean, just a couple of clicks of each other on time wise. So I think everybody's going to be real. It's gonna be one thing if the guy gets out front because it's so hard to make up time, and like the air is so big nowadays with these cars too. So it's it uh I think we got a good shot. It's just if it's meant to be, if it's meant to be, you know what I mean. That's so right, uh, we'll uh we'll give it a shot. You know we worked on it a little bit today, try to get a little better. So we'll see. Well, cool deal, man. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, we're gonna be standing up there cheering you on. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> it's uh it's cool to get in front of a big crowd like this week. We, you know, we've raced probably 40, 50 times this year. You know, we race a lot, but coming to a place like this is so much different. You know, it's, it's this a big stage, I guess you call it. Just, yeah, it's uh, a, it's uh, it's a lot different. So we'll, we'll see what we can do. Cool, man. Well, uh, it's cool to actually talk to somebody from down south finally, because it seems like everybody we talk to is from up north, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't. Know, I've never been to Carolinas race. This is the first time I've ever raced in the Carolinas. My dad's oh, running. He's run uh, at a back in 06 on fast track. He run Cherokee yeah. and he raced here and uh, was it Longdale or Thunder Valley or yeah. whatever? Yeah. Like I've been there with him, but I've never got a chance to race over this way. And we've had a good year this year, so we had some we've had some money to kind of go do other stuff than run the points thing with crate racing. So, and then Adam told me he's like, "Well, you're locked into the invitation race." I said, "Well, at least I get to race one time, you know. At least <laughs> when we get to race a feature." So. Uh, yeah, that's like kind of why we come, and then like I told Dad, man, we really need to run good because there's so many eyes over there. Like people are looking. I said we need to run good. I, don't know, I guess top ten's okay. I mean, we're starting in top ten, but I'd rather be, you know, top three be a lot better to me. So we, uh, well, we don't get in tour. I guess we go to Dublin right there tomorrow. They got 1500 at Patriots Park, which is on the way home pretty yeah. much. So 
it's 20 minutes from the house when we leave there, so we'll go over and try to race again tomorrow. That's what I'm talking about, man. Well, it's definitely going to be easy to spot you out there with that bright orange spoiler, so uh, yeah, it's nice to have. A lot of hard work. Now, we run the whole thing last year, and it was we run fourth, and I mean, we like, we had a chance at one time last year. We closed up and got where we almost win the thing, and just had some bad luck a couple times last year. And this year, we kind of we hit them. We've had a really good year. I think we've won 11 features between crates and 602 and street stock. So we've we've had a good year all together. So we just uh, maybe we can finish this thing out strong. Awesome, man. Well, like I said, we're definitely gonna be able to cheer you on, and we appreciate you. Yes, sir. You on. Appreciate it, man. All right, over here with Leighton Sullivan, man. What you think about your car over here? You doing all right today? Yeah, doing good. We um, got put back a little bit qualifying. Didn't qualify as good as we liked. We had to run to B main, but this one to B main and about to come to the front. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, hey, somebody's got to go out there and win it. What uh, what you think about your chances coming on to the front? I think we're pretty good. You know, we went to Florida last week, started in the back there, and uh, was in the top ten and in, in ten laps, and but had a fan break, which we just had one break in the B main too. But so. We're a little nervous about the about our fan situation. We keep bottoming out and breaking fans, but um, if we can get that figured out, I think it'll be real good. Cool, man. Well, I tell you what, we definitely gonna be up there cheering you on, and uh, we appreciate you giving us a little bit of time here on Chicken Bone Alley. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, before we get you off here, who uh, who all you got on the car? You want to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank all my great sponsors and crew members: Farm Bureau Insurance, Mechanical Edge Incorporated, Big A's Custom Graphics, GSP Express, G Engineering, Bear Wright Race Cars, AES Racing. You know, couldn't do it without these guys. Cool, man. We appreciate it. It's time. Thank you. All right. We got Rambo on here. Points leader in the Carolina class here. Going to win it this year. Man, how's it going? Uh, you know, it ain't over till it's over, you know. So, uh, but uh, we got two more races that we hope to win it. But uh, we're we having a good turnout. we uh, we here with my step boy here, Layton. And uh, he done put her in the show. So, we're going to see what we can do with him. That's awesome, man. Uh, how you feel about his chances tonight? Well, he got... He got strung out there in the heat race, and he's got to start pretty deep. So uh, I don't know if 30 laps is going to be enough, but he'll be he'll be taking it to the front. That's what I'm talking about. Well, uh, good luck to him, and I'm going to tell you what, we don't see you before. Good luck the rest of your year. Hey, I appreciate it, and thank you for coming and talking to us, and uh, y'all have a good day. All right, we got a visitor down here from New York, big block modified driver, Derek McGrew. Derek, what's going on, buddy? Not much. Go uh, come to hang out down there? Yeah, come down and help a couple, couple, couple guys try to get our name in here and see what goes down here, down here, that, down, on down here with the late models and UMPs, and hopefully someday we can get down here and be able to run with them. That's what I'm talking about, man. Well, well, tell us a little bit about your season up there in the in the big block. Um, this is our first year in the big block. We moved up this year after running two years in the Crate Sportsman, and uh, halfway through the season, uh, we ended up blowing our big block up, so that kind of slowed our season down and. We went back to the crate car and we ran pretty good. It's the first season that in the crate modified that we haven't won, so it wasn't the best season, but we're getting it. Just that, that's how it was. That's how it goes sometimes, man. That's that's what they say. That's racing, I guess. Uh, so you think about moving up a little bit, maybe in some of these late models or modifies down there? Yeah, I'm hoping so. That's why we came down here to check them out and talk to a couple of guys, and hopefully some someday um, we can come down here and somebody will give us a ride or make it down here someday. That's where I want to end up living. Just everything down here is racing. You can go ask somebody that works at the gas station. They know all racing is. That's what I'm talking about, man. We we love our racing down here in the Carolinas, which I know y'all do too. It's just, it's a whole different world, it seems like, in certain ways. Uh, so what uh, what what'd you think about it down here so far? Oh, it's pretty cool. Last year we actually came down here and ran. Um, we ended up finishing third, so um, be able to come down here again is really, really cool. I mean, not racing, it kind of sucks. It's a little bummer, but it's definitely cool to be able to be involved in some racing this, this week. Well, man, it's awesome to have you down here. Awesome to see you down here. And uh, whenever we see you racing again, we're definitely going to be cheering you on. And uh, we appreciate you giving us a little bit of time. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. All right. Well, those were a bunch of fun interviews there. It really was, man. They were. They were. A lot of people. A lot of people that we had no idea who they were. But it was really cool to meet them. Well, that's that's what I was going to say. I mean, there was guys that we had never met before. Fortunately. You know, Randy King was up there with us. Walking yeah, he around took us and, around uh, everywhere. <laughs> as you heard in interviews, he, he's like, hey, I know these guys. Let's go talk to them. Like, okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so it was really cool. We got to meet a bunch of people. That, a lot of them from up north that come down. They never come down to race here except for this race. Yep. And so it was It was kind of cool to get to meet them. Um, Rick Dooslack, cool guy. 
cool guy, cool <laughs> team too, man. Cool everybody. You know, <laughs> I don't even remember. Don't, he was walking around in one of those blow up unicorn <laughs> inflatable uh, yeah. costumes. He gets back from the B main, which he, which he, I don't know what he said. I, I, I he finished second. Him. Yeah, he finished second B main and, and transferred today, which was awesome. Um, he gets back, gets out the car. And go gets his unicorn suit and puts it on. <laughs> like, <laughs> so Cole's like, great. what is he doing? <laughs> that was cool. But what I was saying was, you know, his, his, his whole team, his whole crew was awesome. I don't remember anybody's names really from over there. Um, But if, if, if y'all are listening, awesome, awesome group of people, um, especially to take time with Cole. Uh, took him over there, let him sign the back of the car, put his own name on the car. We had to put, we had to post them up oh, too. Yeah. And, uh, put his name on the car and his and his favorite number, and uh, and uh, let him change the uh, roll right rear tire, and get it ready for the A. Yep, definitely did. Um, so that was that was cool. Get talked to him. Uh, Rick didn't have too good a look in the in the feature there. He no. uh, he was he was running fairly good, and from what I gathered, I actually didn't see it, but from what I gathered that happened that he put on Facebook was a. Uh, Pretty much somebody spun in front of him. He just had nowhere to go. You know, yeah. I don't know if it busted right here, just tore it up enough. Well, but it was, I was it watching looked like it center punched it. And <laughs> well, dude, I was watching some of that race on the old Jumbotron over there. And, uh, dude, they were tearing up some junk in that race. There was a Good lot, God. Of, a lot of races that they were tearing up stuff in. I ain't kidding. I don't understand. They're thinking, okay, it's the last race of the year. I'm just going to. Yeah, well, I put a new body on after this anyway. Let's go, go. with it. <laughs> send it in there. I don't know. Send it. But it, I swear they was tearing up stuff left and right. So and that was kind of throughout all the races. I mean, it yeah. was just it was a bunch of them. Um, over there in his pit, well, kind of between two, uh, we talked with Scott Towns Towsley. There, my bad. Scott Towsley, um, cool guy, real cool guy from up north there. Um, seems like a real nice guy. Runs them. Uh, runs what they consider pro stock up north, and uh, so definitely go check him out. Pretty cool. Um, part beside him right there was Daniel Sanchez. Got it. Runs up in runs modified up in Ohio. A good bit. He uh, how did how did how did he fare there? He actually did great. Well, that's the thing about it, and I wish we could have got to talk with him a little bit more. But um, <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a whole lot of time. We really didn't. He was a really cool, dude. Really, really nice, nice equipment. Jam yeah. up equipment. Well, he had one of the only kryptonite, yeah, um, modifieds, modifieds that I've ever seen. You don't see a whole yeah, lot of as well. I have not. Normally, no. you see kryptonite late models. I mean, but you don't see me kryptonite modifieds. No, me. absolutely not. But. Uh, I think he, I might be wrong, but I think he qualified ninth in the main, um, and uh, they were all over the place in that in that in that race. Man, they were everywhere, and they they kept having cautions about every six, seven, eight laps. And uh, I was trying to follow a couple of different guys in there, but uh, I I think Daniel ended up finishing twelfth in the um, in the in the championship race. Um, but they they had the, like I said the invitation that I think was supposed to be Friday night. And they ended up yeah. doing that after. And he qualified pretty deep. Qualified, well, started fifteenth in the invitational and drove it up to fifth. Man, that's good. Rolling. That's good. That's, he, I love it. Like I said, it seemed like a real good guy. Absolutely, we're going to get him on the show some. And oh yeah, and uh, definitely uh, stay in touch with those guys. So they were all took the time with us, and uh, and and we'll definitely do the same for them. Definitely so. Well, another one there, and uh. This boy, I'm gonna tell you, I really think he's going a long way in late model racing. Well, Will Harrington, he uh, man, he was in that first in the feature the championship feature, and he was running. Where I think he started. Where did he start? Fifth, seventh, somewhere right there. Yeah, somewhere. That's right. what we were saying. Anyway, he um was running fairly good, and all of a sudden they had a caution. Well, he had a flat tire. And uh, when um, he had the flat tire come off, change tire, well, they put him in the back. They were on what? 
five laps. If that. If that. All of a sudden, they just wanted it. Well, they had another caution. And when they uh, took off, somebody didn't go. No. They and just they wadded up the whole back the half whole, of the field. <laughs> just right there at the start-finish line. Yeah. And it tore wheel stuff up. Well, I did. We were walking back through the pits after uh, after a couple of races there. And Will had come off that race. He wasn't going to run it no more. It, it tore up the right side pretty good. So I figured he was done just the way it tore the car up. But right. we walked by, and they were over there. They, You know, he didn't, he didn't have his uniform on or his fire suit on and stuff. He just... But they were over there working like on the wood on the car. Well, he had told me they were running Dublin the next day, so I figured, I said, well, they're trying to get it ready so they don't have to do nothing when they get to the track. Yeah. No! Because he was points leader in the crate racing USA late model series. <laughs> they said, we're going to get back out for this invitational. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to make it happen, son. They had that thing tore, the whole right side of that thing tore off there when we went by there. Yeah, there wasn't a piece on it. Not a piece on the right side of the car. Nothing. And uh, They worked hard on that thing, but it dude, was all over there wailing on it, son. Well, they obviously figured it out because guess what he did? Ha <laughs> ha! He parked it. Went out parked there and won the invitational. Lane, boys. That's awesome. I love it. I love seeing that. When you get out there, especially when you behind the eight ball and you pissed off. And I mean, I know he was pissed off. By oh, all yeah. Things. We talked to him. He was pissed off. Yeah, he was pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> we didn't get him back on it. We didn't interview him. We didn't, didn't want to interview that part. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to. Uh, well, I, I, we don't want to be the ones that stick a microphone in somebody's face when they're, when they're pissed off. I mean, yeah. unless it's fun at the time. But no, not for him. That wasn't fun. Um. But uh, yeah, he was ready to roll, and uh, he got up on the wheel and made it happen. Yeah, Brother. definitely. Um, quick, real, real quick. Sterling just showed me some uh breaking news. Right now they're running <laughs> the World Outlaws late models at Charlotte, and Sterling just showed me some breaking news there on the phone. Yeah. Um. Oh, uh, Kyle Larson. And that, uh, granted, finally, Kyle Larson gets a little bit of practice time at a racetrack in a dirt super late model uh-huh. um which he hasn't had time to do at all because w- w- when we've seen him it's been about four five six laps of Maybe. hot laps and that's been it well um he goes out i'm sure they had hot laps earlier tonight but anyway he goes out he's uh he is in group a qualifying session i think they got like 57 58 late models uh he's in the first group and um goes out and sets the new Dirt track at Charlotte, track record with a fourteen three oh five. How about that? And uh, right now, um, Group B is out there qualifying, and the fastest thing to him is Brandon Overton with a fourteen three seven. So he uh, he shattered track record, and he's got it. He's got he got the overall pole. Um, so that's, that's pretty awesome. cool. That's awesome. There he is. That is that is sweet. <laughs> That just goes to show you oh, even uh, more. Well, one thing he could drive, no doubt. I mean, but another thing, Kevin got that car hooked up. Yeah, that car's figured out. They they got it going, and and that that's the thing too, man. Like we said before, like we said at Portsmouth, I think they had a strong car. Yeah, they just got taken out and didn't have time to get the car where they wanted it. No, because no. that track was so different than what they anticipated. But I it think. was so funny because I heard him on the Dale Junior download, and he took responsibility. He said I was just bad there. Mm-hmm. I like, know you wouldn't. <laughs> you were he's not just bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. He's just scared to talk junk about anybody. Yeah, <laughs> he don't want to say nothing bad about nobody. Because I, because I, I talked junk about some people that night. Oh yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I think I, I think I, I think I gave somebody the, the two finger salute around that track just because of him. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so definitely kudos to old, uh, Kevin Rumley and uh, all those guys and uh, RK Motorsports Consulting. Well, Randy Keene on stop Keen. tech brakes, man. Got to have them brakes. Got the brake package figured out on that car. That's awesome. God, I love to see that. That's really cool. Awesome. Well, anyway, so back to our interviews there. Next up, we had uh, Leighton Sullivan, and Leighton is actually Rambo, Rambo Franklin, leader of the uh, Carolina Clash points, Carolina Clash Super Late model. He, uh, 
Rambo Rambo's got that car figured out for that Carolina Clash this year. Definitely. Definitely. So he's gonna have some stiff competition, I believe, this week. He got two races. He's got one at Lancaster and one at what is it? Is it, is it Carolina? I think it's Carolina. Yeah. Not Cherokee. I think it's Carolina. Yeah. Anyway, got two races this weekend coming up. I think it's Friday That's the last and Saturday. Last two races night. in the yep. Carolina Clash Series. The last year. two races of the season. Hopefully. And just so happened, um, they set that schedule up. Seemed like right after they decided to uh, run the last call, not well, the World I Finals. Mean, you might as well be in those <laughs> exactly. two tracks are right there around them. We'll throw a little extra money in these last two races and we'll ride. We'll, you we'll know, we'll forty-five minutes to each one of these. <laughs> yep, exactly. So as of as of right now. Um, he's going to have a little bit of competition coming up there versus what would originally be at the Carolina Clash, but uh, especially this weekend. He definitely is, but I really think who he's running in points. I think he's – Yeah. Well, way, if, if that car runs the way he's been running all year. Well, the only downfall I know of is uh, old Brandon Overton is ridiculous. He's ridiculous everywhere. Anywhere, but he is ridiculous at Lancaster and ridiculous at Carolina. He's going. And Ross Bells is going. And Jonathan Davenport's going. That's the three that I've heard for sure well, that's Ross going. Ross is good at Lancaster. Yeah. He, so, said on, he, said, he said fast time at the World of Outlaws race over there. Yeah, so uh, uh, we'll be rooting him on. I want to see him, I want to see him uh, definitely lock up the championship. And, you know, those guys aren't running for championship points. So he can go run right there with them. Oh, yeah. And, and still so. lock up the points. So that's really definitely cool. So. Really cool. Definitely so. And um, last on there, what you heard was uh, this boy. I'm going to tell you what. Give you a little story about this kid. He is 15 years old, old Derek McGrew Jr. And uh, I'm going to tell you what. He seems he seems like he's going places. He uh, he really does. He got his head on right about racing. Well, his daddy is, daddy is really cool, and he's pushing him in the right ways, seems like, from, oh, what, yeah. we, from what we could talk with him. Well, it wasn't long, but um, – it, it, really cool family. Uh, seems like they're really, like I said, they, they're really going in the right direction. They're not trying to. Uh, doesn't seem like they're trying to push it in a in an advertisement political here I am way. It's kind of a let me prove exactly. my ability way. Well, that's what he was down here doing. He didn't. He right. wasn't racing. He right. wasn't racing. He wanted to come down there and work on cars. Exactly. That was and really so, cool. And so our buddy old Earl Ramey, Earl Ramey Racing Engines, called him. Said, "Come on down here. We'll, we'll we got some cars to work on." Exactly. So he come down there and so they're doing it right. Yeah, definitely we're gonna have to definitely right. get him on the show too. Uh, that boy's going places. I think he's gonna be great. Earl Earl had a lot of good things to say about him. So, uh, um, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm excited Earl. to kind of see what happens there. Earl definitely did, and uh, we're down there talking to Earl. We I try to get Earl on the show again, and he's like, nah. No, nah. <laughs> no. Nah. But I do want to tell Earl. I told him the other day, but want to put it out on here. Tell Earl and and them congratulations. He's got a new grandbaby. Finally able to see. The yeah, finally, finally, finally able to see his granddaughter. So that's really cool. So we left from over there with Earl and all them, and uh, walking around the track. And I'm gonna tell you something. I noticed as soon as we walked down the main aisle over there. The main strip. The main drag through the pits there. Our buddies. You just see, I mean, they didn't have one. They had two oh, yeah. trailers. Jam up. Loaded down. All with your SRI performance supplies. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, we saw that they were going to be closed uh, this, what? Yeah, for Halloween. For Halloween and because they were over yeah, there that's what you say. at a racetrack because and everybody was at the track <laughs> and as soon as we walk in we see them old Calhoun and uh old Sasha over there hanging out and yeah that was cool really was really cool so we walked over there had to walk through a maze of tires they had out there if anybody needed tires all they had to do was go grab one everything in the world you needed Hoosier, over there Hoosiers everywhere everything that was cool there really was steering was. wheels there was every I'm gonna tell you what and, and this was really cool. And this is why I've looked up on their website and seeing in the store and everything. Because there was cars out there exactly like what I got, actually. I mean, I felt at home at this race, you know, because <laughs> yeah. there were street stocks. <laughs> yeah. There were street stocks. I could relate with this. <laughs> but there was literally every piece that you would possibly need for that race car. In the parts trailer. In the parts trailer. 
I love anything it. That, anything like, that you could possibly break on that car that night, they had in the parts trailer. I mean, A arms, yeah. ball joints. You know, that's that's well, it's just like a mobile stuff. SRI because they have everything everywhere. Yeah, but it, it reminds me of the old parts trailer at go kart tracks. You just have everything in the world oh, over yeah. there. You know, Tony Flowers over there selling everything. Well, there is all right. It's got everything sitting right there waiting on waiting on it for you. I, I was I was thinking when some of them they don't really use wreckers at um at Charlotte. They just use a tractor with a boom on the back to pull whatever they needed off the track. I was just really thinking, you know, because we were standing there and it just like a conveyor belt of tractors coming off with all the beat up cars. I'm like, just stop them by the front of that trailer. They'll Let fix it right pick there. Pick out what they need. <laughs> pick out, just look at the car, see what all they need, throw it in there, and then, then take them on to the trailer. Absolutely right. And I'm going to tell you what. Like we said earlier, there was a pile of tore up race cars. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because it was the last race of the year for a lot of these guys, like I say, whatever. But there was a lot of tore up race cars. There was a lot of tore up sheet metal. And there was a lot of tore up frames, A-arms, whatever else. I think I saw some springs rolling across the track, too. You're going to need some stock car steel. Definitely going to need some You're stock You're going to need to call steel. them. A lot of y'all guys, you got to call them. I know y'all got to rebuild some cars because I saw a bunch <laughs> of tore up junk. And like you say, the springs, man, get on over there and get you some Draco springs. That's right. That's right. Every weight, size, height, anything you, you name need. It. Custom order. I don't think it's not even a custom order anymore because like they literally they have it. every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> custom isn't even custom for them because they no. got it. Exactly. Got it all. So it's really cool seeing those guys. It's pretty awesome that they're there. Um, they, they're, you know, another thing that's so cool is, you know, even talking with Robin and Sasha, you know, moving up there. Um, like, like she says, if you see a car with SRI on, take a picture of it. Do this, do that, do that, whatever. Dude, it seemed like every freaking race car my got phone, SRI on it. My phone goes dead when I start doing that because I just take a picture of every car. Everything has got SRI on it. They are everywhere. Everybody wants to be with SRI. Everybody wants to shop with SRI. Everybody finds everything they need with SRI. You can't beat it, man. No, not with a stick. And I love the fact, like I said, that they're at the track. They care. They want to be there. They want to serve you. Whatever you need right there. That goes for any other day of the week, right there. That's it. They got everything you need. So look them up at www.sriperformance.com or www.stockcarsteel.com and get them race cars ready. Um, another quick thing on, on SRI, we finally got to put a put another face with a name. Um, got to meet old Beef Tips up there. Absolutely, man. He was cool as he could be. We're standing up there. I mean, we got our we got our Chicken Bone Alley uh, Columbia shirts, and and we got uh, SRI on on them, and uh, Stock Car Steel and Aluminum, and uh, RK Motorsport Consulting. And we're just walking. We we were actually at the Victory Lane, and we're walking off. And I didn't know who he was. But he come up. And he said, "Hey, you guys, Chicken Bone Alley." Uh, yep. Oh, I'm, I'm beef chicken, tips. What's chicken, up? He's bone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's me. Chicken nuggets down here. Chicken nuggets. <laughs> but uh, but it, that, that, he just come right up, man. Man, he was cool as he could be. Really cool to actually finally meet him, and uh, uh, looking forward to maybe get some time to hang out with him some because uh, he'd be a lot of fun, I believe. Yeah, he he, he got a lot of stories about a lot of people, and yeah. uh, he he knows every part they got inside out. So it's really cool. So if you need him, give him a call up there. They got everything you need, and always remember they're your one-stop shop for all things racing. There it is. Uh, speaking of SRI, and SRI people, one of SRI's drivers the other night, I say he's drivers, you know, he's, he's always been sponsored by them for a long time, um, put on a show. Well, Let's, let's let's go back a little bit before we get into that. Let's go back before we get into that. Then we'll, then we'll get into it. Well, we, we, we're really excited about yeah, this. Yeah, we're, right, we're, so we're excited. We, we apologize. We're excited. Let's, we, let's go back before we get into that. We're, we, let's, go in, let's go in order, actually. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's go into the old Crate Late Model Championship feature of the night. Um, there were some pretty big hitters in that race uh, that was. we know. Uh, but I know there's a lot of guys in that race, you know, that, that, 
traveled from all over to try to come run this thing. And um, there were some big hitters. And like I say, uh, Kyle Bronson was in it. Um, Cody Overton. Cody Overton. Um, Whitener in it? Was he there? No, he didn't come, did he? I don't think, I don't think Mark was in it. Um, I know Corey was there. Didn't see him. Corey had a, had a bad weekend. He tore it all up. Yeah, I saw his car out there in the, in the pits, but I didn't see him in the race. But anyway. He, um, he had such a bad weekend, he put it up for sale yesterday. Jesus. I shared it on her page. <laughs> he, he wants a new car. <laughs> yeah, he was not happy. But um, I think Ross was there. I think, I think was was Ross Bell's there. I can't remember if I saw him or not. But I can't remember. Anyway, there was I know some, he's there, running there tonight. There was some big competition in that race. And, man, old John was on a roll. I, I cannot hardly pronounce his last <laughs> John name. John Ruggiero Jr. Ruggiero, there you go. You, got, you did a magnificent job. Uh, I, I apologize. But... Dude was on a rail. I thought it was a dagger, and it looked like to me to start with, because way back in the day when we first started going to late model races, they had old forty four. It was solid white and black, yep. and then it was solid red and black. It was uh, Terry Labonte's, uh, Justin Labonte, Justin Labonte's ride, yep. owned by. Um, what was it then? Bobby Labonte and them. It was starting Longhorn yeah, or whatever yeah. at that point. Um, and that's what it looked like. It was solid white <laughs> and black. There was zero sponsor on it, number 44. And that was what he had back then. So that's the first thing come to mind when I saw that. I was like, dang, it's old Bonnie's cars out here. <laughs> <laughs> he was on car. a rail, nah, son. No, nah, it wasn't an old car. No, it was not. That car was on a rail, hooked up, dead in the bottom. And, uh, Old Kyle Bronson did everything he could to catch him. I don't know whose car he was running, but he was a it was a yellow eighteen. I don't know who it was. Well, let me tell you why that forty four was so fast. He was hooked up. He was hooked up. He was, but he had. He had but a you see extra. how much? Yeah, you see how much horsepower he come out come off the corner. He come off the corner and just check out on that Earl Ramey horrible. racing engine. <laughs> oh, Earl Ramey, bro. he can do whatever you need. He can give you some <laughs> horsepower, man. He I promise sure can. You. I promise you. He sure can. Carol's got it figured out. Yes, sir, he does. And he now has a chassis dyno over there. And uh, Everybody using it. I'm about everybody. To, I'll put my truck on that thing and see what he can do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably, make, probably hurt my <laughs> feelings. <laughs> Don't hook the boat up behind that way to it. <laughs> no, heck no. Nah, uh-uh. <laughs> no, it really hurt my feelings. <laughs> but, um, well, no, man, he was on a rail. Uh, congratulations to those guys. Earl, congratulations to y'all, man, for... Uh, Putting a strong engine in that thing and uh, and showing them what's up. That's right. That's right. Definitely right. All right. Now, now, I'm excited. I'm excited, bro. Uh, the modified feature come up, and uh, our buddy Kyle Strickler set fast time, won his heat, and I think he he must have had a redraw. Star second. Yeah. Um, well, even the cool thing, too, is, and like we found out before, is he didn't even make it for hot laps. No, no. Um, they, they had issues. Yeah. Couldn't even make it in a hot lap. So, I think no. his first time on the track with that car was qualifying. We're qualifying, yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, what made it so much better for me, and, uh, you know, I ain't talking junk, but I'm just saying, Streamy was starting. Well, Streamy... Drew was second, so he moved to pole. Yep. That lasted for about half a corner. I don't think it lasted that long. <laughs> <laughs> Strigler led this thing from flag to flag. Yeah. And not just not just led it. He was freaking averaging like three to four to half a second a lap faster. Yeah. It was insane. It was unreal. How fast that that car was! I'm telling you. Um, and, uh, I, I, I'm gonna go ahead. We got an interview with him. I'm gonna let y'all hear this interview. It's a little bit longer interview than the rest of them. Um, I'm gonna let y'all hear this interview. And we're gonna talk a little more about it after this interview. All right, up in the holler here with the high side tickler. Kyle Strickler, man, that thing was on a rail out here tonight. It is time for the frosty beverages. Yep. I'm telling you, dude, that thing was awesome. 
Yeah, I mean, I, just, I can't thank my guys enough that, um, uh, I mean, they drug this thing out of the weeds uh, about a month ago and um, kind of were tinkering on it and it didn't even go to the powder powder coater until, I think, a week ago and uh, didn't have a body on it until two days ago. So <laughs> we, we have been working our butts off and uh, Jerry Kelly uh, um, and Ryan Flores that, that own the car and been doing that deal t- together um, just – flat out build a phenomenal race car and um to be able to come here back in one of my old race cars and um also uh you know steve arping branching out and doing this longhorn by low and bro thing with uh, my old crew chief austin bloom just so many of my old buddies from the modified world coming back and putting this deal together and um coming out and not even getting any practice and and unloading and going out there and setting on the pole by two tents just um really makes me feel good about where we're at you know and now we get to go do all that late model stuff but this is where i cut my teeth and um so great to be able to come back to charlotte in front of all my fans and all my buddies i used to race with and and uh have everybody support and then on top of that be uh extremely fast and go out and win this and be the first three-time winner so uh my little brother little nicky hoffman he had two of them i had two of them so i had to be the first one to get uh, to get three three wins that's awesome man i will tell you and me and sterling talked about it you know we're Hung out with you up there in Ohio a couple of weeks ago. Had some awful, you know, running decent, then had awful luck with the motor and stuff like that. And I was like, man, I'd love, regardless of what car it is, I'd love to see him come back here and do something good. And I was like, dude, we're watching on the race monitor half a second faster than the guys during the race. I mean, man, that's insane. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the uh, things motivate you throughout the year. And um, being able to go do all that late model stuff. And then, of course, the heartbreak at Eldor. And then um, I love – you know, there's two places that, that, that I really, really love going to, and that's Charlotte and Eldor. Eldor is my favorite, and then Charlotte's, you know, pretty close second there. But, um, you know, this is just a phenomenal facility, and, and uh, dry Neen jumping on board and, and keeping this thing going. This event gets bigger and bigger every year. And, um, the only thing, I wish we could have had the fans up there in the stands, but uh, it's still um, still awesome to be able to have it. And, and um, you know, so many classes, so many local races, and, uh, be able to come back and do that in your in your own backyard is is uh, means a lot to me and and uh, come back in the modified ranks and these things are so much fun to drive. I mean, I love driving the late model, but the modifieds are so much fun to drive and slipping and sliding around that eight inch tire with no spoiler and um, it's just a lot of fun and I think it's it makes it's make it makes me a way better race car driver to be able to jump back in these things and still race them. Well, that's awesome, man. Well. Uh... So you're going to be back over here middle of the week this week in the Super, aren't you? Yep. Yeah, we get our motor back from Clements on Monday and um, put her in there, and we'll be over here Wednesday and Thursday with the, with our uh, Longhorn there. And um, and, and then we'll uh, – right after Charlotte, we're going to go up to Indiana and go get uh, Craig Sims, um, all his, his truck and trailer and his two rockets there and uh, bring him down to Mooresville and start working on stuff for next year. I think we're going to try to run that winter series um, – so really looking forward to that and really looking forward to running the whole Lucas Tour next year. And, um, you know, can't thank uh, Craig and Shannon Sims uh, enough for um, for what they've done for me and, and, and going out and, and picking me up and, and, and giving me an opportunity to run that full Lucas Tour. So that means so much to me, and, and I really want to thank them for, for doing that. But um, me and Vinny will be back late mile racing next week. And, you know, Vinny's not big, that big a fan of, uh, of his modified stuff, but <laughs> – He'll be tinkering on that late model and getting that thing tuned up next uh, for next week. So, um, back in the saddle of the uh, of the uh, the big old late model there. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Awesome deal, man. Well, congratulations tonight. Congratulations on the new deal and everything coming together. And uh, appreciate you giving us some time. And we hope to be talking to you soon again in more victory lengths. Yeah, absolutely. If we can get that win next week and that, or next week, that'd be awesome. But uh, look forward to seeing you guys over here next week and. Um, Hopefully the late miles as fast as that modify was. Oh, yeah. All right, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> yes, thanks, guys. All right. That was really cool of him to uh, to give us some time there. And, uh, well, first of all, I want to say, you know, I this this podcasting thing is still fairly new to us. We, we started this year. I mean, we, we have not been doing it a year yet. And we've just made some cool friends along the way. And I almost feel like Kyle Strickler is becoming one of those cool friends along the way yeah he, he definitely he, he's so down to earth he, he's such a regular dude and 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 he takes time with people it's not just us i mean we we patiently waited honestly we patiently waited for about an hour and a half two hours 
to be able to get time to talk with him because there were so many people coming to talk with him and and you know he he just he's so <laughs> he don't say no he don't say no no he does not at all and um that's so cool because i don't think he realizes how big and how noticeable and how much of, of a fan base he has um or that he's just so humble that he wants to take time with everybody so that's really cool i love that about him and uh i hope that never changes for sure and uh for him to take time with us uh before the race uh right before he put his helmet on uh we're standing over there at his pit box or at his pit and uh he tells cole to come over there and he gives old cole a fist bump and cole tells him good luck right before the race and uh we, we, we you know get back over there afterwards and you know, he tells him, you know, you know why I won that race? Because <laughs> of that shirt you got on. Yeah, that, that's really cool. Just taking time with, 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 with people and with kids like that, man. Just, to me, that's what it's all about. And, you know, like I said before, um, especially kid-wise, they don't get that a lot of times. You go somewhere else. You got to run somebody down for a signature, and they look like look at you like you're, you know, Annoying holding them, them up. and. Yeah. And it, you know, I just don't like that. And and of course, a kid doesn't. A kid wants to go where they feel welcome and where they feel like they're comfortable at being. And um, as a fan base, which that's what we're about, that means the world to to me and and to uh, definitely a kid and that that wants to get in the sport and wants to 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 enjoy the sport and wants to follow somebody. I mean, three nights in a row or two nights in a row, Kyle uh, Cole goes in there and puts his he he puts his, uh, his 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 bedroom clothes on his night clothes whatever, and he comes out with with uh, shorts and his strictly shirt, <laughs> two nights in a row, because he made a difference. Exactly. He took time with him, and you know he took time with us too, and he has, and uh, like like you said, he he um he really to us feels like a, a buddy that we've met, and and uh, you know look forward to continuing that friendship for sure definitely so but yeah it was it was really cool because after all the people got done with him he's like hey y'all come on up in here so we went up in the trailer with him cracked open cold beer victory beer finally <laughs> after after a little while because they had to go through tech and everything and and they they pushed the cars i mean they roll them through tech and everything so they yep. had a show on the road up there uh we got to talk to him there uh as y'all heard um it was really cool. Just really cool. Awesome to see him get back in that car. And, I, I, dude, I'm going to tell you, I didn't realize it. Me and you both were thinking this was a brand new car put together. Well, I think a lot of people thought this. Yeah. I, this I really was, do. And I think it's going to be new to a lot of people knowing it now. But Yeah, we thought it was a brand new car put together by, it was a Longhorn, but put together by Lone Bro. We, that's what we thought. That's what we thought. We were wrong. Brand new chassis. Wrong. We were definitely no, wrong. Wrong. That chassis he told us was a 2003 chassis. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. Maybe not that old. Pulling it out but of it the was, weeds. It was chassis number three, I think is what he yeah. said. Pulling it out of the weeds. There, there's pictures of it online, them literally pulling it out of the weeds. So, I mean. <laughs> and and they went and powder coated it, repowder coated it. Yeah. Um, put all the new updates on it. Well, I mean, you know, like you said, that's a, that was a uh, trustworthy dominating chassis that they could always come back to and they did and they dominated whatever it is about that chassis is ridiculous i don't uh, <laughs> nobody can I touch don't know it though. chassis though because me and you noticed something on it that it was just like let's do this to get it going i mean i know i don't we, know we look, i mean i don't know if it's giving away anything. i don't think it's really giving well away i don't want to say i mean let him do whatever <laughs> but you know it's it's the fact that they put this thing together spurred a moment yeah you know, whatever. Let's get it going. Let's make it work. Let's modify this, modify that. Get it going. Call Just it get magnificent. It Call Just it, get it great. By the, by the way, get there. That car looks freaking spotless, brand new, beautiful car. And get out there. No hot laps. No nothing. After all that, set fast time, qualifying pole, and then absolutely dominate that race. I love it. Strickler deserves it. His team deserves it. Um. Man, I'm 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 hoping that's uh, a reoccurring thing for this week, uh, for for tonight, Wednesday night, and Thursday night up there in in the Lake Model. But uh, um, really cool to hear what all he's got to say, and and, and the things coming for uh, the off season and next year though, it's, it's it's gonna be exciting for him. Yeah, it definitely definitely is. It's gonna be really cool. Everything that's going on, new team, 
all that stuff. Um, I don't know. I, I, me, me and you talked about it a little bit the other night. I, and I don't necessarily dislike the chassis by no means, but just the good, the good runs that he's had the, the, that he's had in a Longhorn well, this year. I got. Just gives me hesitations about him moving to XR one. <laughs> well, and 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 I'm gonna go back, and I I don't know why I relate this, but I do. But you know, I I relate chassis to people, and and for whatever reason, and it's, maybe it's just coincidental, but for whatever reason, uh, drivers running rockets, we really hadn't had much feedback from. They just hadn't been. They kind of seem uptight guys, and just not really talkable people. Whereas Longhorn guys, they act like you know them forever. And, I mean, to some extent, Bloomquist chassis as well with Ricky and, and Chris. Yeah. Um, you know, nicest guys you'll meet. So, I, I, I'm hoping, and, and I don't know, maybe that's just whatever, but <laughs> it just seems that way. Yeah. It just There's seems that way. There's been a couple guys way. in the XR1s that we've been able to talk to. I mean, but, but, Well, it's, 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 it's coming more easy for us now. It is. And, I, and maybe that's just because it's just being there some and, and, and seeing us a little bit more. But um, It's because our shirts, we look official. Yeah, I think we that's got, what it we is. We got a shirt that says authority on it. Authority. I got <laughs> my says staff on the back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Make, make $175 a week. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> if y'all don't know what we're talking about, y'all look up the greatest interview ever with Jack Hewitt. That might be my uncle. <laughs> uncle Jack. <laughs> no, that's pretty good times there. Yeah, we might, have to, we might have to put that thing on here one day and let everybody hear it from this, but... Anyway, anyway, I don't know. Wait, I don't have a censor button. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You probably not, you probably be uncensored then. <laughs> but um, but no, I, I hope the best uh, for everybody. And and and, and Rock has been first of the year, Bo. Jimmy Owens. Yeah. <laughs> nobody can touch Jimmy Owens. No, nobody can touch him. He was fast. Kyle Bronson was consistently consistently up front. Up front. And it's like as soon as it got hotter, it's like. Pfft, but just, it switched up because. They got worse, but Josh Richards and yep. um, Brandon Shepard all of a sudden got faster. Yeah, very very weird. So yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I I I I, I really think that uh, I really think Strickler's gonna uh, well. He couldn't turn his down. I mean, it's it's an awesome no. It's an <laughs> no. awesome um, anybody would be cha- stupid to turn it down. Right. It's an awesome chance. I mean, you know, like like he told us they're leaving. I can't remember when he said, but they're leaving him and his buddy going up there and getting the hauler and getting the cars and coming back home. Yep. So they're gonna kind of give him reins to do whatever and make it happen. And uh, pretty sure they're putting some uh, stop tech brakes on one of those cars. Um, looking forward to that. Finding out more for sure. From Randy and uh and, and Kyle, love to have those, both of those guys on, uh yeah. for a, for a, for a episode during the off season, kind of see how the uh, prep's going, but um, sounds like hopefully he's gonna run some of the uh the winter tour or whatever it's called. Yeah, that dry dean. Yeah, uh, the the the, the tour that Chris Madden won last year. Um, so hopefully they're going to get the cars that'd ready. Be good, that'd be a good one for him to go run. Yeah, new, kind of shake the car, car down, get used to everything. Yeah. And, Which, I mean, the good thing is, is Hudson O'Neill's been driving that car. and Yeah. He, I mean, and Hudson's, Hudson's, I think Hudson's very capable. Hudson's, a, yeah, Hudson's a very capable driver. Cool guy. I've actually been on iRacing with him a good bit. Super cool guy. Um, he's just kind of been, I don't know, He he's had a, deals this year trying to find rides and get that stuff straight because i don't know it's been a been up and down year for him but hudson's one that got him a full-time ride for next year also in a lucas oil tour ride so so that's gonna be good uh it's it's good for everybody all around actually and so 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 but like like i was saying hudson's done good with that car so obviously kyle's gonna go over there and Put his little things on it that he likes. Well, and and you know, like I was kind of what I was going to get at is um, Hudson's no slouch by any means, and that car's run well. Oh yeah. Um, and I think honestly, you know, t- 
to me, thinking of a, a owner standpoint and a, a worrying from that standpoint, you know, Strickler's had a lot on his mind this year, trying to make sure he's able to get where he can get and go. And, you know, he can't just focus primarily on winning races. Well, that's, that's uh, yeah. I mean, that's where, hard. Where next year, you know, okay, I'm guaranteed I'm going to run this whole Lucas Tour. I can focus on let's go win this series. Exactly. And exactly. I think that's a big stand. That, that, that's got to, that's got to be a, a, a heavy uh, weight lifted off his shoulders just from that, not necessarily worrying about the the, the, the certain type of car or certain type of whatever. Um, but that's gonna, I think that's going to help him a little bit in uh, focusing on, uh, on, on going for the points championship. Definitely so. Um, well, just like what happened at the Dirt Track World Championship up in Portsmouth, blew a motor. <laughs> didn't have a backup. And he wanted to worry about it next year. Had time. another motor, year. but he didn't have time to change it. Yeah. He's not going. That, that's not going to be one of his worries. I mean, when, if that happens, it, unfortunately, if it, I mean it, it, it's racing, it's mechanical. It happens to yep. everybody. If it happens, pull the backup back. Right, he's gonna have that next year, so that's gonna be yeah. that's gonna be good. Well, as as uh, I know, you know, with a, with the podcast here, we we we're not supposed to be necessarily, I guess, or whatever, biased to certain uh, drivers or, or or teams or followers or whatever. But uh, we don't go by that model. We don't at all. <laughs> uh, we we pull and pull hard for Derek Griffith a lot. And we talk we pull about hard for that's our funny thing though, especially at dirt track. Now we pull really hard for a lot of people. Well, we do. We really do. <laughs> you know, and I guess that's the thing, you, you know, honestly, it's funny. Um, a lot of these, like MRN guys or whatever, they say they don't have a favorite. They got a lot of friends and a lot of people they, they root for in, 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 in the garage. And I kind of see that now because oh. when you when you actually are able to take time with a lot of these people, um, man, you want to see them all do well because you see how much they struggle and see how much, you know, fight it takes to get to these places and – you know, a lot, of, a lot of people, as fans, like normal, we don't realize that. We don't realize how much it takes and how much of a grind it is to get up and down the road all year to be able to make these races and be there at the end of the year like they are right now. And it's, it's so much involved in it, especially for these smaller guys like Ooh, Chris yeah. Ferguson, like Kyle Strickler, that's that's trying to do all they can do to, to make these make these events and, and to be there and to – not just be there, but to to uh, I think Strickler was second fastest in B qualifying. Yeah, I mean that goes to show you a lot right there. Exactly. You know they blew a motor. They blew a motor three weeks ago. Last time he ran that car, and they're back at just got his motor back first this week. They're and 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 they're running against fifty seven or fifty six of the best other late model yep. drivers out there, and he goes and sits. I think. I think he was probably third or fourth fastest overall out of 57 cars. That's right. That means a lot to those guys that are pulling it out of their pocket, man, running this stuff. That That's really well, cool. So. It's, 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 now I go to a track when all of them's racing anyway. It's, it's not always that all of them are racing. But when they are, just like Dirt Track World Championship, I'm out there pulling up for – Strickler, I'm pulling oh, for God. Chris I mean, Ferguson. I'm pulling for Trent Ivy. Hey, I was hoping so Ross hard. Bills would make it in. It's so hard when it's I'm a heat race. For Michael and four Brown, four guys in it, two of them transfer. I'm like, God, no. <laughs> Who do I pull for? <laughs> I can't watch. I can't watch. <laughs> I can't even watch it anymore. I'm gonna start doing like Randy does. Just when features start, just leave. Just leave. I'm <laughs> just gone. Leave. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Messing with you, Randy. He was tired. I think he had a pretty long night Friday night. Yeah. But, uh, so, but anyway, awesome, awesome race. Hats off to those guys uh, for for pulling off that uh, <laughs> dominating. I don't even think dominating is the word. Dude, but it was it was insane, in flipping insane. Um, it definitely was. And uh, to to speak of a little bit more, kind of like we said, oh, uh, our more, buddy, we got more breaking news. Well, no, but our buddy old David Streamy, um, <laughs> he uh, he started on pole, dropped be, to second. Be your buddy, yeah, I think that's your buddy. Uh, dropped buddy. to second in the old, uh, I don't know, turn one maybe, if if not before, and uh, sat there for a long time. And I think they had they had cautions every six eight laps, like I say, and 
And uh, he uh, stayed right there a pretty good while. And, man, I'll tell you what, I don't know why Nick Hoffman, why did he start back? I, I don't know what happened with that. I really don't know. That dude was fast, look, bro. I honestly need to look back and see what happened. I, I don't, yeah, back. I don't know why, but um, good Lord have mercy, he was fast. He was driving that thing. I don't think, it's hard to say, but I don't, in clean racetrack, it's hard to say if he was fast as Kyle Strickler. I don't know that he was, but it's hard to say. But he drove that thing up there. Uh, I think he passed Strimmy the third on the last lap. Like I said, I cannot remember the guy's name to finish second. I can't remember I can't right now. Right now. But really cool watching oh, Nick come. I mean, Kyle was on, I mean, he was out there by himself. I mean, it wasn't nothing. It, that was not really exciting watching him. Uh, he was not really uh, contending for anything other than dominating. But seeing Nick Hoffman come up through the field, rolling. I was just glad to see Strimmy not even in. Uh, oh, over in there the, by victory lane. In the um, yeah, the in final the, whatever it is, dude. On the podium. There. Podium, yeah. But, I don't know uh, if y'all know. But I kind of said it there. There when we talked to Kyle, when Kyle Strigger called in, um, what was that a couple months back? I reckon. I'm I'm not a big Streamy fan. <laughs> no, he's kind of a not not because of what happened with him and Kyle years ago, but what happened with me and Streamy years before that. <laughs> yeah, he he's just he he's not a really fan friendly guy. He's kind he, of he may be more now that that uh he may have to be more now. Yeah, he, uh, he ain't got no cup um, ride. We never called uh, that one. <laughs> we did not. Uh, we did not partay in going to talk to him this week. So no, we don't but I tell you who was there that don't have a cup ride too anymore, and I didn't realize because we were actually kind of talking about it. And I didn't realize he was there until afterwards. Jeremy Mayfield was running. Yeah, well, we saw his car. I saw one of his car. One of his right. what car he used to drive. Right, but now he's got a new car that he drives. Okay. And I didn't realize well, he it was a different one. Well, we we uh. We we definitely missed out on him. I had a lot of love to talk with him. We talked to him uh, in the modified. He was running. He was running asphalt modifieds, Myrtle yeah. Beach. Yeah. And we talked to him, and he was nice as he could be. Oh yeah. This was way nice before guy. we started the podcast. He was nice as he could be. He talked with us forever. Yeah. Um, really cool dude. But uh, another Cup guy we saw um, working on Nick Hoffman's <laughs> yeah. modified after the race. Oh, Ricky Stenhouse over there. I think he was taking tires off the car. Um, after the modified race. <laughs> After the race. <laughs> what he like, What's he doing? He got to be in Martinsville in a couple hours. <laughs> he didn't care. Him and Nick's buddies, I think. I've seen a few things on yeah. on Facebook, him and Nick hanging out. and He kind of cruises on his car, I think, just for the fun of it. He just likes That's dirt cool. racing still. That's cool. Hey, I, I, everybody calls him Ricky Stenhouse, and sometimes I think he goes for the gusto a little bit too much. But I'd love to see him just run dirt, man. Cause I, dude's, a, he's, dude's good on dirt. He's awesome dude's on really dirt, man. Dirt. Just go run dirt. It's freaking fun. I don't know. It's, I don't know. But I, anyway, yeah, who knows? I, I, we, we got in that. Uh, I heard Mike Skinner get in that argument one day. Or not argument, just that conversation about why running – NASCAR was a well, thing. Well, same reason Kyle Larson's going back. I He's, mean, he said he, he he had to run a uh, fill in race for this, just real quick. Skinner said he ran a fill in race for Dale Earnhardt one time. I think it was right after Earnhardt, uh, the episode at Darlington, and NASCAR wouldn't let him run the next week. I think, I think, I can't remember. Um, anyway, Skinner filled in for him. He worked out the whole deal with Childers. He didn't even really know what he was going to get paid for it. He didn't really care. He said, "Well, he run that race, <laughs> and they sent him a check." He said, "I finished like mid twenties. He said we had a bad day. Something happened to the car, bad, just bad, all the way around." He said they sent him a check for thirty thousand dollars. This was back in the nineties. <laughs> sent him a check, one race, thirty thousand dollars, finishing in mid twenties. Yeah, he's like, what? And it, well, he thought they sent him too want, much. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I saw, I heard that. They'll do download. Yeah. So he's like, they're like, no, that's your cut. <laughs> it's like, oh god. <laughs> so that's why that's why these guys want to go to cup so bad. Yeah, and I don't blame them. Really, I don't. I, you know, but you know, it seems like to me, if I'm in that shoe and I've made. 
no money is there's not enough money that's enough i guess when you when you look at it like that but when i've i mean to me it seems like if i'm ricky stenhouse and i've made probably lord knows 20 30 million i'm pretty sure i'll be all right just settling and running yeah. dirt and having fun yeah. and not just whatever but i mean i guess it's good retirement plans <laughs> I reckon. Yeah, I reckon. I don't know, man. But um, anyway, really cool. Really cool to see all those guys. Um, again, awesome to be able to hang out with them. And, uh, and they, they, they take the time with us. Uh, everybody that, that took the time to interview with, or interview with us, uh, old Rick, Scott, Daniel, Will, Layton, Rambo, Derek, Kyle, a lot of them. <laughs> all of you. Thank you all very much. We really appreciate it for sure. And I uh, hope you all listen. And uh, and I uh, hope to get you back on here again soon. Definitely so. Definitely so. Uh, yeah, we seem to be working up on getting some interviews on there. Well, it seems weird. And, you know, and a lot of people might think we're funny and we're whatever. But, you know, it, 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 it's, it's pretty neat when you walk through the pits or whatever and people notice you and <laughs> we're like you know you know who i am <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> you what? know who i am i know who you are you know who i am <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's really odd and, how do you uh, know who i am y'all got y'all got a podcast what <laughs> you listen and, well see, that's that's what makes it that's what uh, honestly that's what makes me realize that they're no different from us exactly. they're just regular old dudes doing what they love having a ball doing it and 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 we're right there with them, and they just we're 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 really, we are just lucky enough for them to take the time, uh, to to, to spend with us. So it's pretty cool for sure, and uh, uh, looking forward to the next one we can get to, man. Yep, I am. I don't know when it's gonna be. It's about to, it's about to shut down. Well, uh, unfortunately, we got weddings this weekend, so uh, we can't weekend. get none of the Carolina class stuff. Um, so it's about to shut down for the year, but. Like I said, we're gonna stay. Uh, we're gonna stay uh, going and, and try to get some people on over the off season and see how everything's going. See how the uh, the new preparation for the next season's going for sure. So well, the good thing is we got that Dryden series, winter yeah. series, or whatever. That'll be I guess soon, so. Yeah, all that schedule will be out. We can. Yep. We have races to talk about. Well, there's stuff going on. Snowball. We got to get Derek on soon, hopefully, and uh, yeah. See how his prep's going for the snowball and, and, and all. That'd be really cool. So, um, yeah, there's a lot going on for sure. Um, another thing about the end is the old cup season, man. The old NASCAR season's coming to an end. It is coming to an end. One more race to decide your 2020 champion. And the NASCAR cup season, in my opinion, the 2020 season has pretty much went like 2020. Oh, man, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't like it. I don't like it either. But, you know, before we get to the cup, let's go to the trucks. I didn't get to see that race. You watched I that did. race, Martinsville, it Friday night. It was exciting. Um, I did see where, uh, um, dadgummit, what's his name? Green Empire? No. Um, Big Buck Modified. Oh, Stuart Friesen. Stuart, sorry. Um, I see where he uh, come up and won a stage one stage which is awesome um and was contending right there in top five and uh tore it up right at the end but i think he ended up finishing yeah. sixth i believe yeah, he still finished sixth um he won the stage and it was kind of a toss-up he didn't know because that track was they said the track was so green it was just tearing up tires yeah. really bad i guess they had a little bit softer compound tire on there which is good oh yeah uh, uh, finally, um, I mean, short track, they should have a soft compound tire. Um, but they said it was just killing tires. Well, I guess after their first stop or two, they were like, look, there's a bunch of guys that said, hey, I think we can stay out on the tires we got. And Stewart, after he won that second stage, was like, no. He said, well, let's, or, or, or I think they kind of come to a collective effort on gauging off the tires that he took off then to a pit and he went back in the teens i think it was and uh because a lot of them stayed out surprisingly i couldn't believe that many people stayed out but might as well stayed out because they would run about three laps and have a caution yeah 
over and over and over and over again, all the way to the end. And uh, but I will say it was it was exciting racing, but racing has changed. <laughs> oh. NASCAR racing has changed anyway. Yeah, big time. If ten years ago, if some of them moves would have been made on track, I don't care if it's at Martinsville, I don't care where it is, they've been made on track. Somebody have been getting some teeth knocked out after the race. Oh, most definitely. That don't happen too much anymore. No. Nah. At all. At nah. all. So, uh, so Grand M Finger ended up winning it. Yeah. Uh, by taking somebody out at the end. Well, no, he didn't really take him out. He he didn't take him out necessarily. Um, he was he was right there in it. I mean, right there with him, but he he used every bit of the door and pushed him up toward out the groove. And I mean, but you can't blame him. He with had this. to do it. Though. That's what I was fixing to say. You can't. He had to win to get in. That's the only way he was. And that's kind of they're, they're, he he's 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 playing the card he was dealt. Exactly. And I mean, it just if if you're going if if, if NASCAR is going to want this drama and excitement, I guess then this is what you're going to get. I mean, this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, be ready for it. I mean, but if I'm the guy that got handed that, if I'm Rafael Lassard, because Rafael Lassard got took out by um, Ben Rhodes. Of course. He, well, he takes every freaking body out. Well, I ain't going to necessarily. He got took out by him, but I will say it was more of a racing accident. That that was one that was actually more of a racing accident. Wow. They kind of went in there. In finger was up top Lasar was just to his bumper and Rhodes was on the bottom and it just kind of end finger come down a little bit and Rhodes was just already there mm-hmm. kind of pushed Lasar down into him so, I mean it was, it, it was more of a racing well, than most of it it's Martinsville I mean you know, exactly. that's what it should be honestly but you know like you said short track racing you want to come out uh, with a little, little bit of attitude, you know. That's what it's all about, <laughs> yeah. you know. But uh, yeah, Damn. but anyway, so that was cool. Um, Grant made it on in. Uh, pretty cool to see uh, Derek Griffith's teammate somewhat yeah. <laughs> for one race make it into the final four. Arca, Arca teammate there. Yeah, that's cool. It's absolutely Head cool. So, uh, um, the Xfinity race first time Xfinity car has been in Martinsville in a long time. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember, but a long time. Um. Didn't get to see that race. Uh, we were we were on the road, but anyway, it was really cool to see old Harrison Burton win two in a row, yeah. and uh, actually beat his father Jeff Burton, uh, his his record at the youngest driver to ever win at Martinsville. Yep, yep, I was Pretty that neat. was cool. Uh, I think Noah got knocked out of it. Yep, I think here uh, Allgaier's in it. So Allgaier's freaking ridiculous, Phoenix. He is, but. So Harrison's on the roll. Yeah, he is. It's going to be tough for him to win three in a row, though. Other than that, I don't even remember who else is in it. <laughs> I think bad. Justin uh, Haley. Chase Briscoe. Justin Haley. No, it's Chase Briscoe. And, um, I don't think Algar is in it. I think Haley, Cindric, or Cindric in it. Austin Cindric, Chase Briscoe. I'm pretty sure Haley's in it because he won, he won Talladega. Harrison? No, Her- is Harrison in it? Harrison's in it. He won. Yeah, but is he? I, I can't freaking keep up with it. It's I know crazy. Harrison's in. He won two races, but Haley won Talladega. I'm pretty sure. It's it's uh well, I know he won it. I just but it was he in it then? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was in the final or he was in the uh, playoffs. Hold on, hold on, I'm pulling this up right now. So we, yeah, we sound, can't get given so false sound like any more idiots here. Our bad. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been following more dirt racing than we have asphalt, so our bad. It is Chase Briscoe, Justin Algar, Justin Haley, Austin Cindric. Harrison's not in it. I didn't think but so. But Harrison didn't Harrison make it. Was okay, out. okay, okay, okay. I thought Harrison was in the final. My bad. Yep. Our apologies accepted. Yep. Harrison was already out. Harrison, Harrison is showing out. As in eighth right now. <laughs> Harrison showing out here at the end of the year. <laughs> He's like, hey, yeah. Well, also Cedric and Chase Briscoe are going to be tough at Phoenix, but I hope Lowell Guy can pull him out one. He, he needs him a deck of championship, man. I promise you, he needs it. He needs it bad, which he did sign for next year already. Um, back with Junior now. 
Yeah, it's awesome. We, I hope he can. Uh, we got we got we got a heat race at Charlotte over there. We got a heat race at Charlotte. I'm watching it live actually. Um, and oh, uh, Strickler is rolling. He started on pole and uh, oh, we got a caution already. So yeah, we're keeping an eye on that. Going on <laughs> the uh, old last call for this weekend. Yeah, we gotta so. watch it. Gotta watch it. Gotta thank you, Randy King. Send us a link here. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Randy, very much, very very much for sure. And uh, we're gonna try to keep uh, keep dabs on what's going on over there. So. Um, so anyway, moving on to the cup race. Yeah, I didn't get to see any of that. I was on the water. I watched some of it. I, it wasn't the big. The funniest thing in the whole thing was um, Clint Boyer and Eric Amarola taking each other out. And Clint's like, I ain't got nothing to lose. I don't even care about yeah, he you. Didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> and what was really funny about it was, is Eric come on the radio and told him he's like. Tell him I'm writing this one down. I'm gonna remember this. <laughs> okay. Like, okay. What you, what <laughs> you, you gonna get, do? <laughs> you better get him next week. You gonna, all I can tell you. You gonna egg my house or something? Cause <laughs> I'm done. You gonna, you gonna TP the house? I mean, what we doing? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, you know, really hate it. Really do. Well, start off with I, I you know, congrats to uh, to Chase Elliott. Um, a lot of people say, oh, he's the golden boy. He's this, he's that, he's that, he's whatever in the hell. The boy can drive. The boy can drive, period. Yeah. Whatever they want to say. Um, Apparently, either Alan Gustafson or his Jackman has been reading the pit stop rule book. The, oh, really? Yeah. Um, You didn't see it, but Chase, and this is the only time I've ever remembered seeing this happen. Ever. Ever in history. Seen it happen. He went to go in the pits. Jackman left the wall too early. So what the Jackman did was ran back to the wall. <laughs> so if you go back and touch the wall, that is actually written in the rule book. It was actually written in the rule book. If you go back, it, it, it had a thing in there. If you went, you reset. So if you touch the wall, then you're good. Yep. So wow. Jackman ran back to the wall. Touched the wall, came back around. Really? Yep. And they penalized him to begin with because it said Jackman left too early. He was going to the back. They rescinded the black flag, put uh, him back up in his spot. <laughs> he's like, oh, wait a minute. Y'all better check y'all's own rule book. Because <laughs> apparently somebody been reading the rule book. Because uh, that was the biggest heads up call or heads up by Jackman or by crew chief to call him back or whoever it was. It was the biggest heads up play I've ever seen on pit road, because if it wouldn't been for that, Chase Elliott would not be in the uh, in the in championship four. Wow. Well, I'm glad that 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 that's uh, kudos to them for sure for paying attention, being heads up on that, and uh, and uh, I, I tell you what, they, they, from what little bit of highlights I saw. Carl Strong, which Chase is good there. Chase's always been good there. He, he has been. I, and, uh, I'm assuming. That's what I'm thinking. You know what I think? I think they put some stop tape brakes on it, actually. I believe they did. <laughs> they ain't telling well, nobody, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Randy, yeah. what you doing over there, bro? You, you, you up you, in Hendrick or something? About, yeah, I think he is. No. No, in all serious, though, um, he's awesome on on, uh, on on road courses. He's awesome on short tracks when it's heavy braking. Heavy, oh, yeah. heavy braking. Yeah. So, I really think now, don't get me wrong. Chase is a freaking good driver, and I, th- I really think he's good. But I think they've really figured something out on braking package. Well, you know, like like you said, road courses, short tracks got a major thing to do with that. And uh, I think you're right. I think it has. And, you know, Phoenix, there's a lot of braking going on in Phoenix. Yeah, definitely. So. so look out for that for sure. Any, and on top of that, horsepower. If they can, if they're at a, a 700 or 750, whatever package they call it now, yeah. Um. Every time they run those motors, Hendrick cars are strong. Yeah, definitely, so definitely. So when so, they can uh, show out on the motors and not be restricted down to yeah low horsepower, then then they run good. So exactly. I don't know. Well, we the, got, you know, I, I I love it. I love seeing Chase in there for sure. Um. I just I I'm not a, I'm not the biggest Kevin Harvick fan by any means, but. I really hate to see the regular season 
uh, winner, whatever, regular season points right, winner. Regular season champion, as they call um, it. Yeah. Somebody has won nine races this year. Somebody that has dominated much of this season uh, not make it into championship four. Well, I explained, I'll explain to you how I see it. I'm not necessarily – no, I don't agree that he should even just because he was the regular season champion. I don't think that should give him a buy all the way to championship round. But at the same time, well, if you think about other sports, and I know NASCAR is one hundred percent different. Do not give me our racing in general is one hundred percent different than any stick and ball sport. So you can't necessarily compare. It. But no. nobody who was the number one seed going into the playoffs of any sport. They do not get a rant, a buy all the way to the championship. They don't. Uh, no, so they don't. So I can't I, I, I can't say I don't agree with with him, you know, necessarily not making it straight from there to there. Not saying that. But I hate that it comes down to well, one I race. Don't, four know, driver four drivers in one race. I, I don't, don't like, like I don't like the fact that NASCAR is trying their best to resemble NASCAR season to a stick and ball sport. That's exactly what it is. Because there's nothing like it. So you can't resemble it. Because, dude, any daggum thing can happen. Just like you just saw. Just with Chase Elliott. Okay. Say Chase Elliott, Chase Elliott won 27 races this year. He goes to Phoenix. He made it to the Final Four. Okay. His jack man with 30 to go running yep. around the car. He trips and falls. Yep. They lose 10 spots. His whole season's done. 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 No matter what he did this whole season, his season's done. I don't think that is comparable to stick and ball sports. You cannot use that because one bad play in football can be made up. Exactly. You lose 10 yards on second down, guess what? It's third and 20. You can make that back up. That's right. You can't make up 10 spots at Phoenix with 20 to go. You don't right. do it. You're right. So – but Don't Ke- compare the two. No, but I will say in saying that Kevin's missing of the Final Four wasn't just made off of it was off not of, off of Martinsville. It was not. I agree with that. But this is a big but. Oh yeah, I agree. I, dude, <laughs> there's no reason for, for in my opinion, there's there's no reason to have two bad and and, and I say bad. I mean. Well, that's all he had was two bad races because other than that, he finished second. Yeah. I mean, Texas wasn't <laughs> terrible. No. I mean, finished second to Joey Logano. So, yeah. was that Texas? Was that? I can't remember, but. Kentucky. Uh, Ken- wherever Kansas, it was. Kansas. Yeah. Kansas. I mean, yeah. you, I just, I don't like it. I, I, I really don't. I, I hate the new uh, format. I really wish they would, they would do the playoff deal, start with 10 races to go, and that's well, it. Well, yes, exactly, and get rid of the win and you're in. Get rid of the win you're in. You make it to the top 16 Yep. with 10 to go, and that's where it resets. There's 10 races, 16 drivers. There it is. You go win it. You go whatever you got to do. You run the most consistent. You I don't care if you don't win a race. races. <laughs> if you run second every single race, you're going to probably win the points. That's right. And that's the way it should be, in my opinion. So, and that's just a prime example this week. Prime example of that, uh, they have dominated this whole year. They've run great. They've done everything they needed to do. And have two bad weeks. A little hiccup. Well, and necessarily, Bartsville wouldn't. I mean, don't get me wrong. He had a flat tire. They fought back from a flat tire and was running in the top 10. That's oh, not yeah. a terrible week, in my opinion. No, it's not. But <laughs> knowing you got to have one point, knowing you got to try to take out somebody to make it to that point, I just don't like it. I don't like it. I don't. I don't. I, I will say on that, it has obviously been a long time since Kevin Harvick took anybody out on purpose. Yeah, he hadn't had to. He hadn't <laughs> had to deliberately turn anybody in a while. Because <laughs> why would you not take him out in the middle of three and four? I don't. Why wouldn't know. you go in the corner, catch him in the left rear? Dude, I'd have just. I'd have. I'd have power drive him, him in there. I, I'm telling you. I'd have got out of the car. I say, look, Kyle. I'm sorry, Bo, but I had to do it. And do Kyle would have understood it because Kyle would have done the same thing. I promise you. I well, promise I mean, you. But I, Kyle would have made it look, look like it's supposed to look. what Ryan Newman did to Kyle Larson a few years ago at, yeah. at Phoenix. <laughs> I mean, they do what they got to do. Exactly. That's what, they're, that's what they're dealt. Yeah. But I think Kevin just didn't do it 
right. He did not do that correctly at all. I have no, Kyle. I don't think Kyle lost a spot, did he? Uh, uh no, no. He, 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 he did, did a three sixty and kept rolling <laughs> and never slowed down. Yeah, so that was pretty. And neat Kevin him. spun himself out and hit the wall. Yep. Uh, it's, dude. So I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. Phoenix coming up. Um, be kind of exciting, I guess. Whatever. Uh, I'll probably try to watch it, maybe if I can, and uh, see what happens there. But. Uh, like I said, everybody, don't forget the last call. It's on Dirt Vision um, tonight, tomorrow night, and the sprint cars are going to be there. Well, they'll be here this Thursday. So, well, excuse me. Yeah. Wednesday <laughs> night, Thursday night, and sprint Friday cars. and Saturday are the uh, fourteen sprint. So, That's right. Um, definitely check that out. Also tonight, running on uh, Speed Fifty One on Thursday night. So it's be late for y'all hearing this live, but um, pretty neat little fact here. Um, the uh, Keith Coons Classic or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, they're give running back, the Give Back Classic. Yeah. The little uh, what are they called? The micro, the non-wing Out. micros or Out so, something like that. Oh. Anyway, they're running uh, fifteen thousand dollars to win. There's like a hundred and something entries. Um, but uh, Millbridge is about 35, 40 minutes from Concord, where uh, the dirt track in Charlotte is. And uh, Kyle Larson is going to try to run both of them. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, put some feedback up on what or we're talking about next week. One, two, if he actually made it. Well, uh, from what I read, he's going to try. He, he, he supposedly, he's he's obligated to run the World of Outlaws, obviously. You're right, right. But if he can, uh, he's going he's gonna to have to uh, um, disqualify, I guess, his heat. He's right. supposed to start third in his heat. He's gonna have to kind of he's he's going he's not gonna be able to run that, um, but he's hoping that he can get done here at Concord, um, and head up there for the B main. And he's he's thinking he's got enough points to be able to qualify kind of mid pack at the B, and uh, try to make his way in. So, <laughs> be kind of interesting to see if he can do that. It's gonna be exciting. But we gonna watch it here, and he ain't liking what's going on right now because there is caution on the track, yeah. slowing him down. Oh, Strickler won his heat, by the way. Yeah. Dominating fashion. So that's cool. Heat two two. Something. Heat one of them. One of these. Awesome. That might put him up towards the front. Yeah. I mean. Well, cool deal. All right, guys. Well, I guess that's enough out of us tonight. Uh as always, like we say, uh go check out SRI Performance for all your race car needs. They're the one stop shop for all things racing, stock car, steel. Go get all them body parts you need for your race car and any other type of materials you may need for any building project you have. Uh, Draco Springs, RK Motorsports Consulting. On this car that just set a uh, set track record at Charlotte and on them stop tech brakes, Randy Keen up there. Two Congratulations, Randy. So, um, and uh, as always, uh, also Earl Ramey Racing Engines. Shout out to them. Um, Checkered, the race hub. Social, new, new social media for racing. Um, Ford Bite Apparel. Check them out. So, uh, I reckon that's about it for us. I believe so. Sounds like it. Well, Y'all come check us out again next week. We'll be seeing you later.